What's up? What's good? It's your boy, Tommy Springfield, a.k.a. the King of All Talk, back up in here with another one of these videos. But before we get into all that, I like to say I'm the realest dude in my city. And what I really want to know is, how you doing? How y'all doing out there? So this video is about some sick fucks. Excuse my language, YouTube. But, um... Two girls were missing. They put out an Amber Alert. She was supposed to stay at her friend's house. Come to find out the friend's stepdad was a pedophile. He done killed everybody in the house. Enough of me talking. Let's let the story tell its story. We're hearing from the family of one of those teenage victims in a tragic case out of rural Oklahoma. Police, remember, found seven bodies uh, on the property of a convicted sex offender. And family members of the victims confirm it was five children and two adults who died. Fox News multimedia reporter Madison Scarpino joining us now live from Henrietta, Oklahoma, with the latest. Madison, uh, this is just tragic beyond measure. Uh, what more do we know, though, uh, about these victims today? Andrew, the case began as an Amber Alert for 14-year-old Ivy Webster and 16-year-old Brittany Brewer. And the girls told their family that they were planning to sleep over at a friend's house. Well, that friend's stepfather is sex offender Jesse McFadden. Ivy's family tells me that they had no idea about McFadden's criminal history. And although law enforcement has not officially released the identities of the victims or how they died, Ivy's dad tells us that this was a murder-suicide. We know they were shot. We were told that some bodies were in a row and uh, some other bodies were scattered on the property. I just want to know if my girlfriend, I want to know if she tried to run. Another family member confirms the five other deaths are McFadden, his wife Holly, and her three children. McFadden was released in 2020 after serving 16 years of a 20-year prison sentence. He was expected in court yesterday on new charges of soliciting sexual conduct with a minor and possession of child pornography. Ivy's parents say their daughter was best friends with McFadden's stepdaughter. That's crazy because... <clears throat> He was supposed to be still in prison, you know, he got out early, probably good time, and all of that, you know, and he couldn't resist, he did it again, he probably was already doing it, but when he had all them little girls in the house together, at the same time, he couldn't resist, his urges took over. Then he probably realized, hey man, I, I just crossed the line, I messed up. He had to kill everybody. That's what it seems like happened here. It's a sad story. And, um, and I know a lot of stories that people should have been in jail finishing up their time and they got out early and now they're back on bigger bids. It wasn't your time. You know, you, you, you got lucky and got that early time and you wasn't grateful for it. But let's get back to the story. Or Tiffany, and they trusted the family. It was either Ivy was going over there for the weekend or Tiffany was coming over here for the weekend, and it's been like that for two years. Mm -hmm. And we didn't question, and we should have. But on the other hand, we shouldn't have to question because he's... <clears throat> right there, I got to correct him. He said we shouldn't have to. Listen, I question everything my kids do. I question everywhere they be at. Everybody who they with. I want to know who the mama is. I be like, yo, who they mama is? Who they daddy is? You know, I ask about the mama because, you know, I'm a pervert. I might want something to see cute, you know. But that's another story for another day. But on a serious note, I check everything, bro. So don't, don't think you not supposed to. Hell no. You supposed to. Should have still been locked up. Ivy's parents call her an angel and say she was the type of person who wanted to be friends with everyone. We reached out to law enforcement to uh, see if they could confirm the details that Ivy's dad told us, but we're still waiting to hear back. Andrew? 
Madison, just a question for you. What do we know about this McFadden character? We've heard a lot about him. Uh, pretty long uh, criminal rap sheet as well. Uh, are any, you know, of his contemporaries, friends, family uh, speaking out? Uh, the only person who has spoken on uh, Jesse McFadden are Ivy's parents, who I... And one more thing <clears throat> before I let this video ride on out. Like, the system got to do a better job with tracking down and letting people know about these sex offenders. You know, I don't think and I would hope if they knew he was a sex offender, their kids wouldn't have been there. So there was a lot of... Uh, failures, uh, not enough um, letting people know about this guy. And he was on a new case. He had already had a new case. So there's no sex offender list. There's no nothing. But anyway, let me let this ride out for y'all. I know y'all tired of me. With. And again, like I mentioned in my report, they said they had no idea about this criminal history. Um, and they said that they were actually uh, very close with um, Mc McFadden's now wife, um, Holly, who uh, one of the family members said was dead and her three children never expected um, this to be his character. It, they told me that it wasn't until the Amber Alert was issued and on Facebook they start, started to see about his criminal charges. Um, but uh, other than that, pretty silent when it comes to uh, his family members, but the, the family members that I speak to tell me that they just want answers. They want yeah. to know how he got let out of prison. And now they also want the focus to be on having stricter laws when it comes to um, pedophiles. Yeah. If you're a supporter of the channel, much love and respect. And if you're one of these haters out here, cut the shit.